On December 11, 2006, the New York Times wrote the article, Has Politics Contaminated the Food Supply? In it they said, This fall has brought plenty of bad news about food poisoning. More than 200 people in 26 states were sickened and three people were killed by spinach contaminated with E. coli. At least 183 people in 21 states got salmonella from tainted tomatoes served at restaurants. And more than 160 people in New York, New Jersey, and other states were sickened with E. coli after eating at Taco Bell restaurants. People are always going to get food poisoning. The idea that every meal can be risk-free, germ-free, and sterile is the sort of fantasy Howard Hughes might have entertained. But our food can be much safer than it is right now. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 76 million Americans are sickened, 325,000 are hospitalized, and 5,000 die each year because of something they ate. Here are just a few similar outbreaks found within our nation's food supply just a few days prior to the making of this video. Is there something seriously wrong with our nation's food supply? This, unfortunately, is just the tip of the iceberg in relation to the problems in the food we buy and eat. You wonder, does she still think boys are icky? You wonder, what's up with his hair? You wonder, does he really think he can fly? You'll always wonder about your kids, but one thing you don't have to wonder about? The goodness of new Wonder Smart White. It's got the fiber of 100% whole wheat, the calcium of 8 ounces of milk, and vitamin D. New Wonder Smart White. Always wonder. White bread is made from wheat flour from which the bran and the germ have been removed through the process known as milling. Milling gives white flour a longer shelf life by removing the bran which contains oil, allowing products made with it, like white bread, the ability to survive storage and transit times. In addition, the flour used in white bread is often bleached using potassium bromate, or chlorine dioxide gas, to remove any slight yellow color and make its baking properties more predictable. While the milling process helps improve white flour's shelf life, it does remove nutrients like some dietary fiber, iron, B vitamins, and micronutrients. The Miami Herald wrote on June 23, 2011, chemically treated produce, highly processed foods, and refined ingredients like white flour and sugar cause sickness and disease as well as a host of minor ailments such as digestive issues and lack of energy. The Herald Sun wrote on June 24, 2011, the New England Journal of Medicine published research that advised Weight Watchers to cut out sugar-sweetened drinks, potatoes, and refined grain foods such as white bread, white rice, and low-fiber cereals. They urged people to eat more natural foods such as fruit and vegetables, whole grains, nuts and yogurt, while avoiding anything processed. The Daily News of Analysis wrote on June 20, 2011, It's important to avoid the consumption of jittery foods such as caffeine and foods high in white flour, such as cookies and white bread as these strip us of nutrients and fiber that normally keep your blood sugar stable. 
Substituting the jittery foods with brown rice, whole grain bread, and whole grain pasta will do more gain than expected. On June 19, 1999, the Center for Science in the Public Interest petitioned the Food and Drug Administration to prohibit the use of potassium bromate, which is used to strengthen bread dough. They charged that the Food and Drug Administration has known for years that bromate causes cancers in laboratory animals, but has failed to ban it. Wheat flour is a powder made from the grinding of wheat and is used in a wide variety of foods. For instance, this cake includes two cups of flour. According to the Food and Drug Administration's Defect Levels Handbook, the following levels of natural defects are allowed for wheat flour. Insect fragments, average 75 or more per 50 grams. Rodent filth, hair and or feces, average of one or more per 50 grams. The two cups or 450 grams of flour in the cake amounts to about 375 insect fragments and five rodent hairs or feces. These numbers fall within the acceptable levels according to the FDA. According to the Florida Department of Health's website, Rodents can cause illness in people and pets through bites and direct contact with urine, droppings, and water contaminated with rodent urine. In addition, rodents can cause disease by contaminating food, drink, and eating utensils with urine or droppings. According to What's on My Food website, the following pesticide residues have been found in wheat flour. The most common pesticide found in flour, 49% of all flour tested, is malathion, believed to be a possible carcinogen, neurotoxin, and hormone disruptor. Hey! <laughs> wow. You don't care what the kids eat, huh? Excuse me? That has high fructose corn syrup in it. And? Yeah, you know what they say about it? Like what? Honey, <laughs> it's... That it's made from corn, it's natural, and like sugar, it's fine in moderation. Love that top. Oh, well, thank you. Get the facts. You're in for a sweet surprise. Before the mass production of fructose since 1957, human beings had little dietary exposure to fructose. Fructose was limited to only a few items such as honey, dates, grapes, and apples. A system of sugar tariffs and sugar quotas imposed in 1977 in the United States significantly increased the cost of imported sugar and U.S. producers sought cheaper sources. High fructose corn syrup, derived from corn, is more economical because the domestic U.S. and Canadian prices of sugar are twice the global price and the price of corn is kept low through government subsidies paid to growers. High fructose corn syrup became an attractive substitute and is preferred over cane sugar among the vast majority of American food and beverage manufacturers. Soft drink makers such as Coca-Cola and Pepsi use sugar in other nations but switched to high fructose corn syrup in the U.S. in 1984. Large food manufacturing corporations, such as Archer Daniels Midland, lobby for the continuation of government corn subsidies. Just go into your refrigerator and look at how many products contain high fructose corn syrup. 
I think you'll be very surprised. How did your crop come out then? Well, we haven't harvested it yet, so we don't know how much uh, the yield is. what the yield is and stuff. But it, it uh, from as far as I can tell, it looks like everybody else's corn. So yeah, it's standing up. It's and standing up, and it's kind of yellow and hard. And I think our problem is figuring out what we want to do with it once we harvest it, because we've been out figuring out where it could go, and none of our options seem particularly attractive. And I'm not terribly impressed. With <laughs> and you shouldn't be. Yeah. should be impressed at the stupidity. We aren't growing quality. We're growing crap. Poorest quality crap the world's ever seen. We're growing it today. You don't eat the corn that you grow? No. Nope. On August 2nd, 2010, Routers reported, cancer cells slurp up fructose U.S. study finds. The article begins, Pancreatic tumor cells use fructose to divide and proliferate. U.S. researchers said on Monday in a study that challenges the common wisdom that all sugars are the same. Tumor cells fed both glucose and fructose use the two sugars in two different ways, the team at the University of California Los Angeles found. They said their finding, published in the journal Cancer Research, may help explain other studies that have linked fructose intake with pancreatic cancer, one of the deadliest cancer types. On January 28, 2009, the Washington Post reported, study finds high fructose corn syrup contains mercury. The article reports that almost half of tested samples of commercial high fructose corn syrup contained mercury which was also found in nearly a third of 55 popular brand name food and beverage products where high fructose corn syrup is the first or second highest labeled ingredient, according to two new U.S. studies. The Illinois Environmental Protection Agency has the following to say about mercury exposure on their website. Mercury poses a health risk to everybody but especially to young children and fetuses because they are still developing. Prolonged low-level exposure may cause learning disabilities by hurting the ability of children to think and read. Adults who have been exposed to high levels of mercury may experience trembling hands and numbness or tingling in their lips, tongues, fingers, and toes. Acute mercury poisoning, especially through ingestion, can damage the brain, liver, kidneys, and even cause death. On January 27, 2009, Natural News reported that the average American consumer may be eating five times the upper safety limit of mercury every day due to high fructose corn syrup consumption if they consume the foods tested in the study. And now let's make that random call with today's $10,000 question. Who shot Alexander Hamilton in that famous duel? Hello? Hello for $10,000. Oh, good. Excuse me? Oh, good. Oh, hold on. Let me go for good. No! Oh, I'm sorry. Your time is up. Got milk. In 1973, several thousand pounds of Firemaster BP-6, a fire retardant containing the chemical polybrominated biphenyl, or PBB, were accidentally mixed with livestock feed that was distributed to farms in the state of Michigan. About 1.5 million chickens, 30,000 cattle, 5,900 pigs, and 1,470 sheep then consumed this feed and became contaminated with PBBs before the error was discovered. These events were dramatized in the 1981 film Better Harvest. What the hell? Slit their bellies open, you'll find 100% unadulterated AF-10. AF-10 killed them? That's all the research there is on PBB. Now, there are some things in there that we have to... Uh, no! 
Well, don't drink that milk. So if a cow eats this AF stuff, then the PBB's inside them. Now, there's PBB in that. I'll test it, but it's there. And it's in anybody who drank the milk. See, you sold that milk. Now, everybody who drank it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Walter? Walter? Mm -hmm. I got it, Ned. What? The sickness. I've been sitting here all morning. I can't remember how to plow. Now look, see here? I called them bastards way back in July, right here, see? I called them and I asked them right then, was there anything wrong with the feed? And they made all kinds of uh, tests and they didn't find nothing at all. Nothing, no poison, nothing. <laughs> what was it? PBB. If and when the full force of government is brought to bear, I believe we'll find that a significant percentage of the people in this state have been contaminated by PBB. That is speculation. At this point, that is inflammatory speculation designed to scare. Well, I hope it scares the hell out of somebody here so we can get an immediate quarantine put on these farms. <laughs> You'd have us shut down maybe a quarter of the farms in the state on, on a whim? Studies indicated that PBB had spread through the food chain. In one test of a sample of Michigan's residents, 97% of those tested had traces of PBB in fat tissue. Laboratory studies have linked PBB with weakened resistance to disease in human beings. On July 27, 1989, the Los Angeles Times reported, FDA allows genetically modified RBGH to endanger milk. FDA ignores evidence on cancer risks. These hormones, known as RBGH, are manufactured by chemical companies such as Monsanto. Apart from economic and veterinary concerns, bovine growth hormone pose grave consumer health risks that have not been investigated by the industry or FDA. What Fox Television told us was that we were just the people to be the investigators. Do any stories you want, ask tough questions, and get answers. One of the first stories that Jane came up with was the uh, revelation that most of the milk in the state of Florida and throughout much of the country uh, was adulterated with the effects of bovine growth hormone, the artificial hormone that farmers were injecting into their cows so that they would produce more milk. With Monsanto, I didn't realize how effectively a corporation could work to get something on the marketplace. Of course, the FDA, let's not leave them out. They had to get the federal regulators convinced that this was a fine and safe product. The longest test they did for human toxicity was 90 days on 30 rats. Ozilac is the single most tested new product in history. The scientists within Health Canada looked very carefully at bovine growth hormone and came to very different conclusions than the Food and Drug Administration in the U.S. did. They saw serious potential human health problems and they stood up in Canada and said, we're not going to approve this because we don't believe it's safe. Fax machine spit out a letter from this very high-priced lawyer in New York that Monsanto had hired. And it said there will be dire consequences for Fox News if the story airs in Florida. He called us upstairs to his office and he said, um, what would you say if I killed this piece? We said, well, look, let us show you the research that we have. To which he replies, I don't care about that. I said, you know, this is news. This is important. This is stuff people need to know. And he said, we just paid $3 billion for these television stations. We'll tell you what the news is. The news is what we say it is. On December 7, 2006, the Harvard University Gazette reported, Hormones in milk can be dangerous. The article states, The milk we drink today is quite unlike the milk our ancestors were drinking, without apparent harm for 2,000 years. The milk we drink today may not be nature's perfect food. Butter, meat, eggs, milk, and cheese are implicated in higher rates of hormone-dependent cancers in general. 
Breast cancer has been linked particularly to consumption of milk and cheese.